Well, let's take a look at a couple of options then for configuring Router 2. So here's Router 2. Again, it's in this autonomous system, 65010. So we uh, entered the router configuration mode. We put in our uh, information to the remote neighbor in 65020. So we're using the proper interface. We describe the uh, autonomous system that it's in. And we put in the two network commands, 1022, 1044, uh, with the uh, network masks. So we are specifically advertising this network and the loopback address. Now, the other option we could have done is that we could have had those uh, internal networks being advertised through OSPF. And again, we go to the BGP configuration. We have the ex external. There's my external BGP neighbor. And I'm redistributing OSPF, which would take these routes in OSPF and drop them into the routing, uh, the BGP route. Again, remember, they don't look different to router 3. They're just BGP routes. The fact that they're external is only because they came from an external neighbor. Now we're suddenly going to add some extra complexity to our configurations. Now we're going to look at external and internal BGP. So let's take a look at this really quick. I've got a neighbor over here, ISP1, and a neighbor, ISP2. And I'm going to have uh, external BGP connections here between router 4 and 6. And uh, they already labeled it for us here uh, between routers 3 and 5. Okay, that's fine. But how do I get all of the routes that ISP A is, or 1 is sending to me to uh, be able to come out to ISP 2? I mean, if I want those routes to get there. Or how do I know that Router 4 know about the routes it learned from the other external neighbor? Well, here's what we're going to do is we're just going to look at Router 3 as an example. We would do the similar thing in Router 4. And Router 3, the first command is that we make uh, a neighbor with our external right remote autonomous system neighbor uh, to 65020. And we also make another neighbor internally. Notice that's the same remote AS command. But that's our router 3 to router 4. So that's going to router 4. And uh, this is going to router 5. Now we're still putting in our same network command. We want to advertise the 10.2 network. We also want to advertise the 172 network, which is this one way over here. We're assuming router 3 has that destination in its uh, routing table, hopefully from uh, OSPF or uh, EIGRP running inside here that it knows about that destination. Uh, or, or you can see here, instead, what we did is we set a static route. Okay, so again, that's uh, important, right? I'm advertising 172.16 with that 16-bit mask, but it's really a 27-bit mask. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, creating a static route for that destination so I can advertise it. But that's okay because when the traffic comes in for that destination, I will have a more specific OSPF EIGRP route, so I'll still be able to get there. Now, the important part is, is I know what networks I'm advertising to ISP1, but as I receive these networks from ISP1, I can now send them to Router 4 because I have an internal neighbor relationship with them. And Router 4, now learning those, can send them out here. So in a way, I'm becoming a transit network. If I really wanted my ISPs to send traffic through me from one ISP to the other, uh, I can set that up. I've facilitated that information. You'll also notice that we did one thing that I said we should not do uh, with this internal, and that is we peered on the interface. But since we haven't really got into the peering on the loopbacks just yet, we'll let that go. It still works, just as long as we are assuming that if I'm peering to this uh, address here, that interface, that, it, that we're, we know we're using our outbound interface as the source, and the other side has to agree to peer the same way. All right, we're going to take a look at some basic BGP configuration. And uh, to make life pretty easy, I put little boxes around the different autonomous systems. So on my left is autonomous system 100, the middle is autonomous system 200, and then the uh, right side is autonomous system 300. So I'm hoping that between those, um, we can remember which one is which. And uh, we're going to start off, believe it or not, with an external uh, BGP connection. Now, the external BGP connection is going to be, uh, I'm going to start between core 1 and router 1. All right, now let's take a look at what those addresses are. Remember, external, unless we do something different, needs to have uh, a um, same subnet or, or has to be directly connected. And we, we do satisfy that agreement. So F, uh, basically the uh, F10 on both of those routers. So I'll leave my mouse over it. And the F10 is 172.16.2.1 on router 1. And uh, over here, 
172.16.2.2 for this other router. So that's where uh, we're going to start the BGP. Let's go ahead and start off with core number one. Bring this up a little bit so you can see what we're typing. And uh, we'll get into the uh, configuration mode. And from here, we're going to go into router BGP. Now, remember, this is the one that's in BGP 200. So now we're going to uh, do our configurations. And we're going to start off with the neighbor command. In this case, our neighbor. Uh, and again, moving it off here just a little bit so you remember the, the picture. The neighbor over there was 172.16.2.1. And they were in the remote autonomous system of 100. Now, the other router over there doesn't actually know yet that it's uh, participating in this uh, adventure. But we'll uh, get there soon enough uh, when we're ready to. All right, so that's our, uh, our setup for just becoming the uh, network neighbor. And, of course, we could also do a lot of network commands, uh, the network commands being whatever it is that we uh, want to advertise, um, you know, in our network uh, from here and put in the mask. And uh, 255, 255, 255, 0. So, you know, I can put in all sorts of network commands of, of those uh, routes that have to be active in my tables. And so I'm just going to do that real quick while I'm on this core. It's actually connected to a 5 network. Well, I say 5, 172.16.5. And it's connected to uh, 6. And eventually it's going to learn about 7 if it doesn't already know it through OSPF. All right, so, um, and that was just to throw in a few networks just for the fun of it as far as what we might want to advertise to our external neighbor. All right, so let's uh, control Z and uh, do a show IP BGP summary. Now, summary lets us uh, know whether or not we have our neighbor, if they're up or down, how many uh, messages we're sending out there. Uh, and uh, it also gives us, uh, you know, at least a kind of an idea of what it is that we're going to try to send to uh, that particular neighbor how long up or down and those types of things. Let's uh, also go over here to uh, show IP BGP neighbor. And as I do the uh, neighbor uh, information, here's uh, something that's uh, that we're going to find us to be uh, just a little bit uh, interesting. And that is uh, that we are stuck in active. All right, so what does active mean? Active means that we're trying our best to make our connection to this thing, but the remote router doesn't even have a remote router ID. And uh, as I said, it shouldn't because um, we haven't configured it to be running BGP. So I'm not expecting it to uh, do anything for me, no matter how much I look through this list. Um, it gave me quite a bit of information about the counters and everything with that, with that neighbor. We're just not ready to go because router 1 also needs to be configured. So now we'll go into router 1. And from here, we'll go into our configuration mode. And let's change our host name to router1 while we're thinking about it. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, from here go into our router uh, BGP. And now this one was in autonomous system 100. And uh, we're going to have a neighbor with uh, 172.16.2.2. And they are in the remote autonomous system of 200. And there we saw we got a little message that said the neighbor is up. Let's uh, do show BGP, oops, IP BGP neighbor. And uh, we see the BGP state is established. Now we haven't uh, set up any network commands, so uh, I'm going to set up a couple of network commands over here. Uh, 1620, which is, of course, the uh, common network we have between them. And I'll set up the 1010 network. Uh, that is there with the same mask of 255, 24-bit mask. And there is also the 1050 network. And uh, that actually has a, a very uh, long mask of uh, 30 bits for a serial network in between those. All right, so uh, we've set that up. And in fact, we can uh, put in a network command for the loopbacks. This, remember, these ones had loopbacks. And uh, 8 was a summary location that I could put in for the uh, loopbacks on this particular BGP network. And uh, that was a 22-bit uh, uh, mask, I believe, that we wanted to use for that. So um, we'll put the 252 in just a different spot here to get that mask. All right, so now we're uh, going to exchange all of those routes as well. And um, 
Oh, we'll break out of there real quick back to our, our privilege exec. Now, just as a reminder, we are running a single area OSPF in each of these BGP regions. So routers three and one over here are already uh, BGP neighbors. Uh, all of the core routers, I'm sorry, not BGP, but OSPF neighbors. The core routers are all OSPF neighbors and R2 and R4 are OSPF. And they're all running their own OSPF zero. We're not running any OSPF, uh, OSPF between uh, the routers that are on the edge of these uh, networks. So uh, right now, I should have a, we saw that I have an external neighbor. I'll go back to core one, and uh, let's do a show IP route and see what we're learning here. All right, so as I would hope, uh, I am learning from my external neighbor about the 1010 network and the uh, 101050 with a 30-bit mask network. Uh, just as I expected to see um, in putting those uh, those network commands in. And um, that's uh, letting me know that I have reachability into that other autonomous system. All right, so now I'm going to do something very similar over here. And by the way, right now I have just, we're just single homed. Uh, there's only one way in and out of uh, core uh, of each of these autonomous systems between each other. I'm going to uh, purposely keep it single homed at the moment just to... Uh, also be able to show some of the examples of uh, what goes on with internal BGP. But uh, now what we're going to do is the same thing with um, the core 3 that's in autonomous system 200 and uh, router 2 that's in autonomous, autonomous system 300. So let me close these uh, existing routers down. We'll go here to core 3. And again, this is just our basic uh, configuration. We're just doing the basic stuff to get this external neighbors uh, set up. We still have a fundamental problem in, um, in our center area there of Autonomous System 200, and that is to have internal BGP. So we'll uh, show that off in a little bit when we uh, look at some um, uh, further examples. But right now, for this demonstration, we just want a basic uh, external stuff set up. So router, BGP, and uh, let's see, this is the core three. So let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, host named as core three, just so we can see that better and router uh, BGP, and we're in Autonomous System 200, and we're going to have a uh, neighbor with uh, the router over there, which was uh, router number two, and uh, as a neighbor, it was 172.16.3.1 uh, was the address of that neighbor, and it is in the remote AS of 300, and again, it really doesn't know that it's going to be a neighbor because we haven't set up that router to be uh, a neighbor on the other side, and we have the network commands uh, that we put in there. I'm going to put in the network command for uh, the, the um, uh, mask uh, 255, 255, 255, 255. I'm putting in the network command for our loopback address. Uh, I'll put in the network command for uh, the 172.16 uh, addresses that uh, we share in this network. And uh, fortunately, now I can just hit the up arrow. So you don't have to see how good or bad I am as a typist. Or I should have just told you I was that fast at typing and uh, you would have hopefully believed it. But you've seen enough of my typos, I think, by now. All right, so we've got those network commands. Uh, again, I'll exit. Uh, exit out again here. Uh, show IP BGP neighbor. Uh, again, I'm stuck in uh, active because the other side doesn't know that it's going to be a neighbor with me. I haven't set that up yet. All right, so let's go over to router two. And on router two, we will uh, go in here and uh, get into our, eventually to our configuration mode. And um, router, oops, see there's those typos I was just talking about, router, BGP. And we said this one was an autonomous system 300, and it's gonna be a neighbor with 172.16.3.2. Again, they were directly connected um, to each other. And there we're in uh, remote autonomous system 200. Neighbor adjacency has come up. And uh, again, I can put some network commands in over here. We have the uh, 103030 uh, network with uh, the mask 255, 255, 255, And this one had a, a network of, uh, of uh, some loopbacks. And 13.012. Uh, Dot zero, and uh, we'll see if we can get those loopbacks uh, to uh, to show up over there as I uh, throw in some of those options. 
And uh, I'll go ahead and put in the loop backs for the other router that's in this autonomous system um, that is not going to be playing with the BGP protocol, but they are talking through OSPF. So anyway, we'll throw all of those in and uh, then we'll do a do show IP route, make sure we're getting some BGP routes. And we are certainly seeing all the routes coming from uh, the other side. Now, notice I'm not getting BGP routes from Autonomous System 100. And the reason for that is because um, the uh, two core routers that are doing BGP here are not set up to do internal BGP. They're not uh, communicating just yet. But uh, that's something we're going to uh, take a look at because there are some unique things we have to worry about with internal BGP. But right there was the basics of uh, doing BGP configurations. And uh, we did those with the external BGP option. And after the uh, external option was done, we... Uh, we then uh, were able to uh, see the routes being exchanged. The routes showed up in the routing tables. And when you look at the routes, they do have the correct next hops. BGP uh, external will, uh, will show us the right hops to get from uh, one place to the next. All right, so that's our basic BGP configuration.